Hello all, and welcome to the first episode of Xenoblade Explained, the show where I, JB, explain to you some general information and lore about the game Xenoblade that you might not have picked up on beforehand. In tonight's episode, we're going to be looking at and answering the question of how Fiora returned to being a Homs. But before we jump into this video, if you have a question that you want answering about Xenoblade Chronicles, then leave it down below, and if this series does well, I'll make sure to answer it at some point. But with all that out of the way, let's jump right into the video. Let's start from the beginning anyways. Fiora is the childhood friend of Shulk and Rhine and the younger sister to Dunban. She was tragically killed by Metal Face on the attack in Colony 9, which is the driving motive which begins your entire journey across the Bionis and the Mekonis. You later discover that Egil and Venea have converted her into a Mekon Face unit, turning her from Hom to Machine. Once you are finally reunited. You continue your adventure with the mission to take down and defeat Zanza and once you have done so and the final cutscene is playing you see from the perspective of Fiora walking around the new Colony 9 looking for all of her friends until the point that she finds Shulk and the two of them stand peacefully together. Wait a minute! In a surprise plot twist, Fiora's standing there as a hom, not as a machine. How could this have happened? Oh wait, what's that? Monolith Soft forgot a cutscene. Oh right. Well let me fix it for him then. Let's rewind right back to the beginning. <laughs> That's right, this section of the final cutscene takes place six months after the events of defeating Zanza. And in that time, somehow, Fiora has managed to regenerate her whole body. And the answer is actually simpler than you might imagine. You see, everybody watching this video will have been to the location where Fiora's body was restored. Not sure where it is? Well, let me help you. As the location is the cylinder hangar on the outskirts of Colony 9. As mentioned the first time that you passed through Tefra Cave, that location is thought to be a ship from an ancient civilization, which we all now know was actually the High Entia. And the High Entia, fortunately, just happened to have made a device known as the Biotic Regeneration Device, which has the ability to restore Fiora's body. Now, although in game the door leading to this room can never be opened, the door is still located there within the game. And after the events of battling Zanza, Fiora would have proceeded through said door and would have sat in the regeneration chamber for six months, as the process to recover her body would have taken at least that amount of time. The discovery of this location is also thanks to the entire party, as Shulk, while furiously searching for a way to restore Fiora's body, has another vision, which shows him the location of this device and how they're able to access it, which which is all primarily thanks to Melia and her authority as the new High Entia Queen being able to gain access to the room. Now Fiora initially refuses to access the regeneration chamber due to them discovering the location before the final fight with Zanza, as Fiora being herself would rather stay by Shulk's side and fight alongside him rather than be left behind for when her time finally comes. Now if you're curious where I've got all of this information from, then look no further than the Monado Archives, which was a book released with the Japanese version of the game, which has this secret side story inside of it. There's a link to the English version in the description. And although not directly mentioned in the side story, it's also likely to believe and think that due to the presence of this regeneration chamber, that all of the other faced mechon, primarily the mass produced face mechon, will have all been able to return to their normal home selves as well. And that's all for this episode of Xenoblade Explained. I hope you've all enjoyed this video and if you have and want to stay up to date with future episodes of this series then make sure to hit that big red fat subscription button as you're scrolling down anyway to have a read through of the Monado archives. And once more I thank you all for watching and I hope you've enjoyed and until next time guys, peace.